Whenever you buy an appliance or any other valuable device, it comes with an owner's manual. The manuals are written by experts who know the precise purpose of the product. The manual will come with instructions on how to use the device correctly, on how to handle it with care, uh, what to do if it's not working, and warnings of things you should avoid doing. I came across some very interesting instructions found in the owner's manuals of products we all have in our homes. These warnings are not jokes, they are actually in the instruction manual. Here's one for a sunshield. It says, do not drive with sunshield in place. Now, you know if they put a warning on there for that, it's because somebody actually did it. Or how about this one for a blow dryer? Do not use while sleeping. You know somebody burned down their house doing this. Washing machine. Do not put any person in this washer. I actually did that to my brother when he was younger and he turned out fine. So I don't know if that warning is actually necessary. Or how about this one for a chainsaw? Do not hold the wrong end of chainsaw. Uh, yeah, I didn't think that would actually need to be on the instructions. How about this one for the iron? Do not iron clothes on body. Come on, be honest, has anybody actually tried to do this? My hand is up, I have tried to do this. How about this one for a Superman costume? Warning, this costume does not enable flight or super strength, but it says nothing about x-ray vision or heat vision, so those might be possibilities if you buy this product. How about this one for a drill? This product is not intended for use as a dental drill. Okay, I get some people don't like going to the dentist, but using power tools is not a better option. And last one here for the microwave, do not put pets in the microwave to dry them. I don't even wanna know if there is a story behind that warning. See, but a manual gives us everything we need to know about the product, including things to avoid, that would cause damage to the product or the person using it. And in a similar manner, God is the all-knowing expert who created the heavens and the earth, including you and I. And he's left us with an owner's manual to live by. And that manual is called the Holy Scripture, otherwise known as the Bible. 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17 says this, all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. The Bible, unlike any other book in the world, is the very word of God. The Bible is the inspired, infallible, and authoritative word of God. It's inspired, meaning it's God-breathed. It's the voice of God in print. It's infallible, meaning it's without error, and it's authoritative, which means it has the right to guide our lives. The Bible is truly unlike any other book because it is the very word of God. And when you accept this book as the word of God, it has the power to transform your life. 1 Thessalonians 2.13 says, For this reason we also thank God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which also effectively works in you who believe. Notice the word of God was effectively working in them because they received it not as the word of men, but as the very word of God. When you approach this book, as the word of God, it begins to work effectively in you, transforming you from the inside out. And so I wanna show you four ways that God's word effectively works in you. The first one, it works in you to give you success. Joshua 1.8 says, keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. See, God's word works in you, causing you to be prosperous and successful. The principles in the Bible work. 
When you do what's written in this book, you will experience supernatural success. Take Chick-fil-A for example. You know, God's word tells us that you should work six days and rest on the seventh. The seventh day is a day of rest to honor God. This is why Chick-fil-A is closed on Sunday to honor the Sabbath. Now, from a natural standpoint, this is a terrible financial decision because Sunday is the highest earning day of the week for fast food restaurants. So not only are they open one less day every week compared to other fast food restaurants, but they're also closed on the highest earning day for fast food restaurants. But do you know what is the most profitable fast food chain? That's right, Chick-fil-A. They are the most successful and prosperous fast food chain and no one else even comes close. In second place is McDonald's at 2.2 million in revenue per franchise. Chick-fil-A brings in 3.1 million in revenue per franchise, almost a full million ahead of second place. In the natural, there is no way Chick-fil-A should be the most successful fast food restaurant, but because of their commitment to obey God's word, they experience supernatural success. When you follow the principles in the Bible, you will be the head and not the tail, above and not below, always on top and never on the bottom. This book will make you a winner in life. If you meditate, confess, and obey the word of God, you'll become successful in everything that you put your hands to. Number two, holiness. Psalm 119 says this, how can a young person stay on the path of purity? By living according to your word. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Many people question whether or not it's possible to actually live holy, if it's possible to live free from sin, and it is if you give attention to God's word and you hide it in your heart. Sin will keep you from the Bible or the Bible will keep you from sin. It's one or the other. If you ever thought that by simply becoming a Christian, you would automatically stop sinning, you are sadly mistaken. The only way to experience victory over sin is by regularly spending time in God's Word. The Center for Bible Engagement did a study with 40,000 Christians, and they asked these people if they read the Bible one to two times a week, three times a week, or four or more times a week. And then they asked them some personal questions about their life. The goal of this study was to discover what effect Bible reading had on a person's behavior. Their research discovered that reading the Bible one to two times a week had almost no impact on a person's behavior. Reading the Bible three times a week had a minimal effect, right? It had a small impact, but not much. But what happened at four times a week astounded researchers. They thought that they would see maybe a gradual increase, but at four times a week, they saw a massive impact. Reading the Bible four times a week, loneliness dropped 30%. Anger issues dropped 32%. Bitterness dropped 40%. Alcoholism dropped 57%. Sex outside of marriage dropped 68%. Pornography dropped 61%. And Christians were 230% more likely to share their faith. The people who engaged the scriptures four or more times a week lived completely different lives than the people who didn't. And this is what Jesus was talking about In John 8, when he said, if you remain in my word, you will truly be my disciples. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. When we remain in God's word on a daily basis, his word transforms us and the result is freedom. Number three, victory. Ephesians 6, 17 says, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The word of God is a weapon that enables us to experience victory over the enemy. You know, chapter six of Ephesians lists the armor of God. And if you read through each piece of the believer's armor, you'll notice that every piece is defensive except for the sword of the spirit. The Bible is the main offensive weapon for the believer. In Matthew chapter four, Jesus was in the wilderness where he was tempted by Satan three times. And each time the enemy tempted him, Jesus responded by saying, it is written. And then he would quote the word of God. 
Jesus responded to every temptation with the written word of God. Jesus used the word of God to defeat Satan. As Christians, we need to remember that we are in a spiritual battle. And if we are gonna experience victory in this battle, we're gonna experience victory the same way that Jesus did, and that is by using the word of God. See, when you know how to wield the weapon of God's word, you'll be able to defeat every attack of the enemy. And the fourth way that God's word works in us is by giving us nourishment. First Peter 2, 2 says this, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. You know, when my wife was pregnant with our first child, everyone said, enjoy those babies. They grow up so fast. I thought, yeah, 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 I know. I had no idea. It was like I blinked and they grew up. And the reason why newborn babies grow so fast is because they eat every two hours. You know, in those early months, we were waking up every two hours in the middle of the night to feed that baby. And because they eat so much, because they drink so much milk, they grow so fast. See, God's word is likened to the milk that we need as Christians to grow. It's likened to the bread that sustains us when we're a little bit older, and it's the meat that makes us strong when we are mature. The more you feed on God's word, the faster you'll grow because God's word gives us the nourishment we need to mature and become strong spiritually. No matter what stage of life you're in, when it comes to your walk with God, you need to feed on God's word if you want to grow. But the opposite is also true. If you stop feeding on God's word, you become malnourished spiritually. You'll stop growing. You'll become stagnant and spiritually feeble. Ever wonder why some people have been Christians for years and yet their lives don't look anything like Jesus? It's because they stopped feeding on God's word somewhere along the way. They got stuck in a state of arrested development. Instead of growing up spiritually, they got stuck in spiritual infancy because they stopped spending time in the word of God. And so during your reading this week, you'll learn about the Bible and most importantly, you'll learn about how to develop the habit of feeding on God's word so that you can continue to grow in your relationship with God. Because in order for God's word to work effectively in you, it has to get in you. If your Bible is sitting on the shelf at your house, it's not going to produce success, holiness, victory, and nourishment. It's only when God's word gets inside of your heart that it has the power to transform your life.